Welcome back again, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. This is a long overdue video now on how to remove paint from diecast cars. So as well as this being a how to and a tutorial, I'm also going to use this opportunity just to show you four different comparisons of the way I use these strippers to remove the paint. Two of them are practically the same, albeit different types of chemicals. One is a um, more hazardous caustic soda version and the other one is a wire wheel, a brush on a rotary tool. Now the first one is a product uh, from B&Q here in the UK by Dial, their own version. It's a paint and varnish remover. It's the cheapest one. It's £3.80 for 500ml. You can chuck it in a little tub. It's very, very good. Second one is Nitromorse, more of a worldwide brand name. It's more expensive, £9.42 going all the way up. This is a 375ml one, a little bit more harsher. Onto the concentrated caustic soda. This is the most volatile of the one. It's not my favourite, if I'm perfectly honest. Sits somewhere in the middle at £5.87 for a kilo. You'll need a jar to put some water in and again a spoon or something to pour the stuff into. And then finally, there's the wire wheel option. It's a last resort for some more of the, for the older cars than it is for the newer ones. But again, I'll show you the four different versions that I use. So there's a couple of extra tools that you might need. Brush, especially for the nitro mulch for dabbing it on. And some dental tools. You can get these cheap on eBay and Amazon. Really good for modelling, for getting into the nooks and crannies and scraping things away. I'll put all the links in the description down below. But well worth putting in your modeling tool arsenal very very good so for fairness i'm going to use the same casting so we get a good comparison across the range but just before i do i'm just going to show you um it's not so much a little trick i have mentioned this to other people and they haven't done this before i'm surprised because by using a bit of acetone or nail polish remover it's quite volatile and quite hairy and that's my wife because she gets a little bit hassled when I use her nail polish remover. I just stick it into a used mayonnaise or sauce bottle so it doesn't go everywhere. And it's easier to apply actually on the back of this. But if you just put a little bit over the back of the card and let it soak in, as quick as I'm saying this, it'll start to peel away. And then you can decard if that's the, the word to use, the term to use, and take your cars out of the carded backs and save them if you wanted to do something else with it. A bit like this when I've done an RX-7, you can stick it back in and make a little limited edition card or use the actual plastic vac form piece and make your own card at the back. But it's just something I thought I'd show you anyway. So get back on to removing these castings the first stage i'm not going to bore you with that i've got another tutorial on that one so if you want to go and check that out please go and have a look but let's get cracking with the first one it's the easiest and i'm going to go off what the instructions say to put it in for an hour or coat it in an hour and come back and redo it again after an hour i literally just pour it into the tub and you can reseal the tub again afterwards chuck your casting inside it and leave it well alone it's the easiest method out of all of them. I think it's the safest method. You still have to wear gloves at the end of it when you come to clean it all up. But for leaving it in the background, if you plan ahead, it's very, very simple and easy to do. So I'll shift that to one side and I'll get cracking with the others because that'll take about an hour or so to do. So on to the second one, it's the Nitromorse method. This one is a little bit more volatile. So please, Pay attention to all the health and safety regs on the back of it. With all these, you've got to use a ventilated area. Wear a mask if possible, if it's not very well ventilated, but try your best. Put some goggles on and I'll get, get cracking with this one. You need to use a little brush. I always buy the cheap and cheerful ones from the little discount stores. This one looks a little bit like Beaker out of the Muppets. <laughs> and then I'll just simply, liberally dab it all over. I did try and leave this poured into another container and seal it up in the past, but 
it'll just dry up and go all like really congealed jelly at the bottom so it literally wastes it all and it is quite expensive as i say this one is £9.42 for 375 millilitres. You can get two litres of it for about £30, £35. So it is expensive stuff. As you can see, you use the least compared to everything else. And I've just speeded up 15 minutes worth because the instructions on the back say to do it for 15 minutes, give it another coat and then leave it for another 15 minutes. But as you can see, it has bubbled up quite considerably and I reckon it will pull away at this stage but I'm going to go off what it says just for the fair comparison just to go what the instructions are telling me so another quick dab all over and I guess different materials and different paints will all react differently so that's why I think because this has bubbled up so much it probably would have come off now I guess the other 15 minutes is for if you were taking the paint off your staircase or off a door or something because this is essentially what all this paint strip is for really i don't think they're ever intended for us modelers and die cast enthusiasts to be doing this and as you can see speed it up again very quickly it's done very little and that very short span there was another 15 minutes worth and it did literally nothing so i think it was fair to say you probably could have shifted it all this off after 15 minutes so i'm just going to lightly do it now and as you can see, you probably, if you were that way inclined, be a little bit more careful and use a scalpel and probably pull a whole side of the decal off. And I suppose what I always use as well is a used toothbrush, just because you can get into all those little areas of fine detail and it'll come off just that little bit easier. And half an hour or so this one's had and as you can see it's coming off very very easily so i'll clean all that up and we'll do the comparison at the end so on to the the third one now this is the caustic soda one um it's my least favorite i did use it many years ago for motorcycle parts but somebody mentioned this in one of my earlier videos saying have you tried it and i hadn't actually tried it on the model part so i thought well I'll give it a few goes, which I have done, and it reminded me how much I don't really like it, to be honest. So it is very volatile. So use heavy gloves, wear a mask. I don't like the eye goggles. I use a full face mask just because I'm a little bit of a wimp, really. I'll, I'll be perfectly honest. I, I don't like the stuff. Get some warm water, get a jar, get a spoon to pour the stuff in, and let's get cracking with it. Pouring warm water in as well. The instructions do tell you to use cold water because it is for the drains, this caustic soda. So it is meant to be flushed away, put down the drains to shift all the gunk that gets left down there. So you can't really do it when you're cleaning all this up. So I will point that out because you are removing paint really. So you'll be washing and flushing paint down the drain. So with all of these methods, please dispose of all the leftovers uh, wisely considerably for the environment and all the rest of it so all I'm going to do is give it a quick stir just to get the thing going and it gets really warm as well it gets really hot there will be fumes coming off this so again a ventilated area this I'll be honest should take a lot quicker than I've done it it took me about half an hour there is people there are people that have seen do it and they flash up rather quick and say it's taken them five minutes again i think all parts are different i think all paints different myself whenever i've done this maybe i'm not putting enough in i put about three teaspoons or so in there it takes me about half an hour there is no doubt however of the finished method of when it's coming away if you see now it comes off very very easily almost well actually it's almost like it's the paint wants to stick together and come off in one piece like cling film almost so a very good method it's not my favorite i'll be perfectly honest just because of how volatile the stuff is you have to store it safely once you've got children around once you've got pets around you know i say that i i let my 
children go in my garage. I've taught them safety, putting goggles on and using the tools properly. Don't mess around. So I'm my own worst enemy, really. So leaving stuff like this around, I don't really like to do because I can guarantee if there's anything like me when I was their age, I'll be trying to set fire to something or burn the house down or whatever. So I don't really like using this stuff, I'll be honest. I hide this stuff away. But I'll give it a good clean up and we'll see the comparison of this one at the end. Now onto the last method, it's the wire wheel method. This is probably the most expensive because you've got to buy either a rotary tool or a bench grinder like this. So 30 to 50 pounds uh, is the initial outlay and then whatever the actual rotary brushes are. So it's the last resort to be honest and I only really use it on older cars just because of its the paint and the pitting that's in there. Initially, I used it for car parts and real bike parts, so it's just come in a little bit handier on this. But as you can see, you can polish them up with other uh, brushes and buffing cloths to make a polished finish like I just showed you on the Porsche. But I'm just going to quickly show you now with the rotary tool and the smaller brush, just going over it. And it will leave some scratch marks some witness marks all over just because of the pressure and the angles that you're having to do especially if it's a little bit more say detailed got a few more nooks and crannies like this combi has like i'm doing on the roof so it does take probably the quickest out of all three but with that obviously is the outlay originally to get the, them There's one thing I don't particularly like doing when I'm using these rotaries as well. Is all the little fine pieces of the brush do fly out. So be very, very, very careful and wear the mask. I'd say mask and not even the goggles because as I'm going to show you here now, all these little bits and whilst I'm actually editing this video, the following day these little bits are everywhere my wife's even got them in her jeans i had one in my sock this morning both clean on fresh this morning but they just seem to stick to your skin and get everywhere so i don't particularly like it so going back to the original one then i have actually left this for the best part of an hour and a half this is back to the paint and sh paint and varnish stripper from dial good thing is you can leave it in the tub you can knock it all off like I've just done there and you get the same effect as both the caustic soda and the nitro remorse without I say with, with, with a, a fraction of the the volatility of it all really so a little bit more messy a little bit more gloopy but it does all literally come off in big shreds big peels of it all comes off so it can clean up very very straightforward and very very easily again i'll use a toothbrush and a kebab skewer to get it all off but i'll go away and give it a good clean so we'll get onto the full comparison now all fairly similar results in the sense that we've got the paint off but if i go and do a little bit more in depth with that, we'll start with the paint and varnish remover. Now this has got into every single nooks and cranny, it gets into the inside, into the hard to reach areas. It leaves it absolutely smooth. Yes, I've left it in the longest. If you're okay to plan ahead and you don't wanna sit there and do a five minute job, you'll be okay. You can put as many as you want in at any one time. You can save it by putting it, pouring it into a pot. And funnily enough, in the pot I'd left one for about a week or so and it was a really old casting what I'm showing you now and it was left upside down on its roof and as you can see it's super super smooth and the paint well it's not the paint the actual body above that or where all the pitting and corrosion was because this is an old corgi van probably 30 odd years old I guess it's still really rough like sandpaper so it's really etting away and giving it a real butter smooth finish so that's what that does onto the nitro remorse yes again it's pulled it all off but it has left little bits in the, the shut lines of the car around the headlights just little areas and you could probably attribute that more to how you apply it when you're blobbing it all on 
you're only going to get certain areas, which is not the end of the world, I guess, because I'll go on to one of these tools that I mentioned earlier now, the toothpick. You can, sorry, not the toothpick, it's a dental tool. It's, um, yeah, what dentists use. You can get them off Amazon and eBay. Again, I'll put this in the description, but you just get in there and you can scratch into these fine areas and spend little to no time just to get it every single last bit off. If you dipped it, the whole thing in a whole vat of nitromorse, then it probably have the same effect as the first paint and stripper remover. But for me, it's a bit expensive. It was the most expensive out of all of them. And it hasn't got really in all to them nooks and crannies. Now onto the caustic soda. There's no doubt this has cleaned it off in its entirety. Probably I say the quickest out of the chemicals in the sense I left it about half an hour. You may get away with it quicker if you put more of the stuff in, but because it fizzes up and froths up, I tend to go a little bit softly, softly approach with it. And as I said, I'm not that fond of, of using this stuff, but there's no doubt it yields very, very good results. If you're a, a bit of a cavalier and you don't mind the health and safety then crack on with it i guess but side by side with the paint and varnish remover the one on the left that's left a bit more of a brighter finish i suppose the one from the soda version is left more of a galvanized finish a little bit darker We're on to finally the the wire wheel version you're never going to get into all the nooks and crannies so you will always get the paint left in certain areas Again, you'll never get into the shot lines and you will leave scratch brush marks. You'll leave brush marks and you'll never get underneath it. So it's okay for hard stuff, hard to remove, but on newer stuff, it's a bit of an overkill, a last resort, if you like. And for all these little bits that fly off, it is a little bit, I wouldn't say dangerous because none of this is date. Well, it is. I don't like it. <laughs> Simple terms is I don't like using this. So use it at your peril. So what would I choose out of all of them? Well, for all the reasons I've mentioned, the wire wheel and the caustic soda, I don't like to use a lot. Caustic soda uses very, very good results or yields very, very good results. But just for the health and safety aspects of both of them, having children around and pets around, even in the garage, not that fond of using them so i'll push them to one side not that fond of them if i'm being brutally brutally honest which leaves the other two of the other two again good results from both the nitromorse is a little bit more expensive and still have to use a little bit of work on scratching certain areas of leftover paint away maybe down to how much you're putting on in certain areas but nevertheless so for me there's a clear winner there's a good reason why i use it in all my videos it's cheap to buy you can put it into a sealed container and use it over and over again and keep topping it up i don't mind leaving it for an hour or two just chuck them in crack on with something else and it's all good no drama whatsoever all that it leaves for me to do now is to think what I can do with all these cool combis. As always, thanks for watching.